Yes, I yes. have. I have read the book of Dracula. <laughs> I have also <laughs> not read the book of <laughs> Dracula. My dearest Lucy, forgive my long delay in writing, but I have been simply overwhelmed with work. The life of an assistant schoolmistress is sometimes trying. I am longing to be with you and by the sea where we can talk together freely and build our castles in the air. I've been working very hard lately because I have to keep up with Jonathan's studies and I've been practicing shorthand very assiduously. Assiduously? That's the right word. Thank you. When we are married, I shall be able to be useful to Jonathan and if I can stenograph well enough, I can take down what he wants to say in the way and write it out for him on the typewriter, at which I am also practicing very hard. She works hard. She does. He and I sometimes write letters in shorthand and he is keeping a stenographic journal of his travels abroad. When I am writing with you, I shall keep a diary in the same way. I didn't mean one of those two pages to the week with Sunday squeezed in a corner diary, but a sort of journal where I can write to wherever I feel inclined. I do not suppose there will be much of interest to other people, but is not intended for them. I have just had a few hurried lines from Jonathan from Transylvania. He is well and will be returning in a week. I am longing to hear all his news. It must be so nice to see strange countries. I wonder if we, I mean Jonathan and I, shall ever see them together. There is the ten o'clock bell ringing. Goodbye. Your loving Nina. Tell me all the news when you write. I just thought I should say this to you. Um, you have not told me anything for a long time. I hear rumours, and especially of a tall, handsome, curly-haired man. Mm -hmm. My dearest Mina, I must say you tax me very unfairly with being a bad correspondent. I wrote to you twice since we parted and your last letter was only your second. Besides, I have nothing to tell you. There is nothing to interest you. <laughs> so boring. Town is very pleasant just now and we, and we go a good deal to picture galleries and for walks and rides in the park. <laughs> As to the tall, curly-haired man, I suppose it was the one who was with me at the last pop. <laughs> can tell the one who hasn't read this book. Oh, yeah, you read mine really well. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has evidently been telling tales. That was Mr. Homewood. He often comes to see us, and he and Mama get on very well together. Cheeky Mr. Homewood. <laughs> they have so many things to talk about in common. We met some time ago a man that would just do for you. Ooh. Mm. If you were not already engaged to Jonathan. Damn boring Jonathan. Boring Jonathan. He is an excellent party, being handsome, well off, and of good birth. He is a doctor and really clever. Just fancy. He is only nine and twenty. <laughs> Dearest Lucy, that's a little young for me. Dearest Lucy, that's entirely inappropriate. <laughs> he, is only oh, he is only nine and twenty, which I can only assume means twenty-nine. Um, and he has an immense lunatic asylum all under his oh, own care. What a catch. <laughs> Far more interesting than Mr. Homewood. I think he is one of the most resolute men I ever saw, and yet the most calm. He seems absolutely imperputable. Yes. Thank you. I can fancy what a wonderful power he must have over his patients. He has a curious habit of looking one straight in the Sounds face. Sounds like you should get with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to come home. Um, as if he is, as if trying to read one's thoughts. He tries this on very much with me, mm. but I flatter myself he has got a tough nut to crack. Mm -hmm. um, I know that from my glass. Do you ever try to read your own face? I do. And I can tell you it is not a bad study. It gives you and gives you more trouble than you can well fancy if you have never tried it. <laughs> What's what everyone are you laughing talking at about? me? <laughs> what are you talking about? Reading your own face. Everyone's laughing at me and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. This is a bit <laughs> <clears throat> He says that I afford him a curious psychological study. <laughs> Not surprised. Me either. She's clearly very She's strange. mental. 
Right, this brings a whole well, you new... You see where you were cast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> He says that I afford him a curious psychological study, and I humbly think I do. <laughs> She's not humble at all. <laughs> Mina, we have told all our secrets to each other since we were children. We have slept together, mm -hmm, and eaten together, and laughed and cried together, and now, though I have spoken, I would like to speak more. <laughs> Really? Oh, Mina, couldn't you guess? I love him. I am blushing as I write for, although I think he loves me, he has not told me so in words. But oh, Mina, I love him. I love him. I love him. I wish I were with you, dear. Sitting by the fire, undressing, <laughs> as we used to sit, and I would try to tell you what I feel. Let me hear from you at once, and tell me all that you think about it. Mina, I must stop. Good night. Bless me in your prayers. And Mina... Pray for my happiness, Lucy. P.S. I need not tell you this is a secret. Good night again. <laughs> yeah, I'll just carry on reading the whole book. <laughs>